Welcome to worship on this Trinity Sunday. I'm Ann Svenningsen and I serve as Bishop of the Minneapolis Area Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. We are so grateful for the ways our congregations and ministries have been gathering this past year for worship online. Our hope today is to provide a worship service that both celebrates and strengthens our Synod faith community and beyond, as well as provides a small respite for our congregational worship leaders. We are deeply grateful to Church Anew, our partner in providing this service, and grateful for their wonderful technical crew that makes this service possible. We're thrilled to welcome our incredible worship team and can't wait for you to join them in congregational song. We also thank our assisting ministers, Pastor Deanna Kim Bassett, Pastoral Minister Christine Belfry Johnson, and Deacon David Martinez. We're deeply thankful to Joe Davis for his spoken word and to Brian Evans for his children's sermon. It is my great honor and privilege to welcome presiding Elder Stacy Smith of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, as well as president of the Minnesota Council of Churches as our preacher today. Thank you, Elder Smith. And we thank Calvary Lutheran Church for hosting us in this beautiful sanctuary. Calvary is located at 39th and Chicago, just one block from where George Floyd was killed. This congregation stepped up quickly to accompany those who gathered for prayer, who needed food and, and water, who needed a safe space. They have been accompanying people throughout these last several months. As I mentioned earlier, today is Trinity Sunday. We celebrate that God in God's very self is beloved community, three persons, one God. And you and I and all people are created in God's image, created for beloved community. And still gathering here on the first anniversary of George Floyd's death, we also confess and lament how the sin of racism continues to rupture beloved community. So we invite you to enter deeply into today's worship, to lament, to repent, and to dare to dream about what God might be doing in our neighborhoods and in our world. We worship together, for God has promised to meet us here. Together, worthy, all together, wonderful. 
Come, let us gather in the presence of the triune God. Come, let us behold the God whose love is beyond comprehension. Come, let us dwell in this sacred space and speak with honesty before the living God. We have a community of speakers reading a litany for those not ready for healing by Dr. Yolanda Pierce. Let us not rush to the language of healing before understanding the fullness of the injury and the depth of the wound. Let us not offer false equivalencies, thereby diminishing the particular pain being felt in a particular circumstance in a particular historical moment. Let us not speak of reconciliation without speaking of reparations and restoration, or how we can repair the breach and how we can restore the loss. Let us not rush past the loss of this mother's child, this father's child, someone's beloved son. Let us not value a false peace over a righteous justice. Let us not be afraid to sit with the ugliness, the messiness, and the pain that is life in community. Let us not offer cliches to the grieving, those whose hearts are being torn asunder. Instead, let us mourn black and brown men and women killed extrajudicially. Let us weep at a criminal justice system, which is neither blind nor just. Let us call for the mourning men and the wailing women, those willing to rend their garments of privilege and ease and sit in the ashes of this nation's original sin. Let us be silent when we don't know what to say. Let us be humble and listen to the pain, rage, and grief pouring from the lips of our neighbors and friends. Let us decrease so that our siblings who live on the underside of history may increase. Let us listen to the shattering glass and let us smell the purifying fires. For it is the language of the unheard. Please join me as we pray together. Show me my own complicity in injustice. Convict me for my indifference. Forgive me when I have remained silent. Equip me with a zeal for righteousness. Never let me grow accustomed or acclimated to unrighteousness. Amen. Here I am. Do you see me? I've been trying to speak with you for a really long time now. I wore my best clothes and I even pulled out my best moves to try and get your attention. You see, I've been out here in these streets for a while now and and I'm wondering if it's okay, I mean, would it be all right if I asked you to join me? You don't have to stay long and, and you could even take turns. I mean, I'd even be okay with you making signs or speaking with others who might listen to you and probably not me. It's just that it can be scary out here all alone. And I know I smile a lot, but sometimes it's because I don't want to make you feel sad. But the truth is, I need your help. 
You see, a lot of people who look like me are having a really hard time just being. And there's a lot of reasons for why, and those reasons are super important. And, I, and I'd be happy to tell you all about them if you, if you have the time. But while you're finding out, if you could just stand, walk, wheel, dance, sing, shout, cry, hope next to me, I'd, I'd really appreciate it. I could even show you some of my best moves. We have a long road ahead of us, and, and I may not make it to where I hope we are going, but I'm confident that if we keep inviting more people to join us in love, that perhaps someday we will. Here I am. Send me. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, starting with verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the, vid at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I have lived among people of unclean lips, yet my eyes have seen the King, O oh, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. The word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. This is for all those whose love of healing and justice doesn't wax cold, but only grows stronger with the breath of our ancestors. And when I say love, I mean a love like fire. I wish somebody so would catch, catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. I wish somebody so would catch on fire, burn into a healed and whole love, love like fire. fire. Some run from it, some run to it. How are we just now feeling that fire when we already done been through it? Some burn flash crosses and Bibles. This fire burns inside us to fight for survival. Some shed blood from good fire and rifle and rifles. This fire burns because it's time to ignite a revival. This that Holy Ghost fire. Set it off, make your whole soul light up. Inspire the sick and tired to get up and fight to the no more sick and tired. Not a violent or coerced, but a gentle guiding force. Like a vibrant torch guiding light and warmth. Not a riot, but a rising from love is a deep abiding source. Come on, hit me with the chorus. I wish somebody so would catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. I wish somebody so would catch on fire, burn into a healed and whole. 
Let it burn. Some things we need to retrieve and some things we need to leave. Let it burn. If this is an upheaval, then some things we need to upheave. Let it burn. If we're limited or freed by our beliefs, then what do we even believe? Let it burn. And what are the necessary means to let our people breathe? Let it burn. Burn the grief and rage into the flames of liberation. Let it burn. Burn the guilt and shame into the flames of reparations. Let it burn. Each flame is an anguish that can't be contained in our language. Let it burn. Burns away the chains until all that remains is love. I wish somebody so would catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. I wish somebody so would catch on fire, burn until we're healed and whole. What needs to die and why won't we let it? What needs new life to be resurrected? And why must death always be a prerequisite? This is the process of perfection and we're not perfected yet. It may burn, but it's not meant to burn us. It may hurt, but it's not meant to hurt us. This fire will free us from all of our burdens. Refine, purify, and purge us until the fruit bearing roots buried beneath the surface reemerges. We won't be consumed, we'll blossom and bloom like a butterfly who's lost its cocoon. We will rise, we will rise, we will rise. God gave Noah the rainbow sign. No more water, it's fire this time. Love like fire. The Gospel according to John, the third chapter. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came, by Jesus, came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into a mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, You are a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent, the serpent in the wilderness, so it must be the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God.
To Bishop Ann Svengensen, I want to thank you for this opportunity and trust to be your speaker today. I say trust because to be invited to speak before a congregation or an assembly that is not yours is an honor and a level of trust that you are not going to say something outrageous. To be invited once is a privilege. To be asked back a second time is an honor. And since this is my second invitation from Bishop Ann, I am truly honored. And to all of my brothers and sisters of the Minneapolis ELCA and guests and friends, I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the allotted time to me today, I want to speak to you concerning this sermon title, Jesus's Plan, Jesus's Plan. Let us pray. Our Father and our eternal God, I thank you for this opportunity that I have today to speak to your people, Lord God. Father, sit down, Stacy. Sit me down, hide me behind the cross, and let them only see the Savior. Allow the, your saving grace to come through in this word, and we will ever be so grateful. In Jesus' name we pray all of these things. Amen. Jesus' plan. The Swiss theologian Karl Barth once said that faithful Christians should always do theology and live life with the Bible in one hand and a newspaper in the other. And if Karl Barth were still alive today, he might just change what he has to say, and he would probably say this, do theology and live life with your digital Bibles in one hand, the news feeds and your other social media all comprised in your smartphone. Karl Barth was basically saying, we have to learn to discern the word through the lens of the Bible so that we can be aware of the troubles of the day but remain faithful. For many of us, we wake each day to a world that brings change at an astonishing rate. We can scarcely keep up with it. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I'm a boxer contending in a championship fight. I'm in, a, I'm in round three and I'm already tired and there are nine more rounds to go. The relentless changes of COVID, racial discourse, mass shootings, cyber attacks, food shortages, gasoline shortages, vitriolic politics, wars and rumors of wars, and then our own burdens can make even the most faithful doubt and long for a closer walk with our God to understand the truth about what's going on in this fast-changing world. Which brings me to our text today, where we find a man named Nicodemus, who was dealing with some fast-changing times of his own. Now, Nicodemus was what we would call a big shot in this religious world of his, of his day. He was a Pharisee and a member of the Sanhedrin. In other words, he was a man with an outstanding reputation that was held in high regards. And, and his reputation came about honestly because he was a man devoted to God and God's laws. He was a leader of the Jews and a teacher. Yet, all of his accolades and understanding of God's word, Nicodemus had some doubts and was searching for answers. He believed that Jesus could give him the answers to. A teacher himself, yet he was willing to come to Jesus to be taught. And that's a principle for us today. It doesn't matter how many degrees we have or how many societies we belong to or if you are a bishop or a member in a pew. We all must be willing to have an open heart and an open mind to allow Jesus to teach us the truth about who God really is. So, so Nicodemus had made up in his mind that he had heard enough about Jesus and he wanted to meet him. But one thing stood in the way, his reputation. He couldn't be seen with the man who openly criticized the Pharisees for being hypocrites and challenging their authority. And here's another principle for us. 
The father of lies is the devil, and he wants to keep us in darkness by telling us that you can't be seen with certain people because it will ruin your reputation or cause you to be thrown out of organizations or cause friends to unfollow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And maybe that was Nicodemus's problem. He didn't want to be thrown out as a Pharisee. Therefore, he came to Jesus under the cloak of night. When he got in front of Jesus, he asked him this, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. And it's right here, right here, that I believe that Nicodemus, although he was telling the truth, was using man's ways to impress the divine. I'm gonna repeat that one more time. Nicodemus was using man's ways to impress the divine with human vanity. But then Jesus turns around and blows his mind with this. He says, very truly, I, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Boom! Nicodemus' mind was totally blown. He was expecting Jesus to reply to his statement with a simple thank you, and instead he replies with a kingdom mentality, with a plan for salvation. Nicodemus quickly follows up with Jesus and asks, how can this be? Can a grown man re-enter his mother's womb and be born again? Then Jesus drops another mind-blowing bomb on him and basically tells him that no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and spirit. Now, this was mind-blowing to Nicodemus on a couple of levels because he understood the word of God and the kingdom of God. It was earth shatterings to him because Jesus told him that the kingdom of God would come to the whole world and not just to the Jews. And on top of all of that, he wouldn't be part of it unless he was personally reborn. And here's another principle for us. The kingdom of God is personal. It cannot be politicized, nor nationalized, or drawn against ethnic lines. It is a personal decision that we all must make to follow the teachings of Jesus the Christ. And, and now, this is in the order to gain into the kingdom of God. In other words, we must do these things in order to gain entrance. We must do these things in order to be saved. And we must do these things. We must do these things. We must repent, submit ourselves, and submit to a spiritual rebirth. Now, I don't want to get into all the theological points of water and spirit, but I do want us to know today that you just can't enter the kingdom by living a good life or having great knowledge or even having a great reputation. We must be reborn spiritually. We must also know that the devil is contending for our very souls. He is always lurking about seeking whose life he can steal, kill, and destroy. And if you look back over the past 15 months, the evidence of that is greater than ever. But the blessing for us is that Jesus came, that we would have life and have it to the full. We are now in the season of Pentecost. And I don't think that it's a coincidence that it arrives during our time of spring a time when God's creation is awakening from a slumber to a time of rebirth, renewal, and revival. It's a time for us to remember that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It's a time for us to remember that God's love is not static or self-centered. It reaches out and draws others in. And I believe that if you are listening to this message today, 
that you were born for a time such as this. You were born to carry a message of love and sacrifice. You were born to make a difference in this world. You were born to let others know that the love and sacrifice of Jesus Christ was made for you. And if he can save us, he can save the world. As we are coming out of the sheltering in and COVID restrictions, let us remember that we are still, I said we are still children of God. And with that inheritance comes a sense of duty to not only live right, but to do right and to be an example to this sin sick world. Let us remember to look at this world through the lens of the Bible and to see those who don't understand that the kingdom agenda is not just for one set of people, but for all of God's people. It's not for political gain, but to gain the whole world. It's not to draw a line between ethnicity and nationality, but to draw all men, women, and children to the Lord our King. Jesus has a plan. Jesus' plan, a plan to save the whole world, one convert at a time, a plan that is designed to put our trust and confidence in Jesus and that he and he alone can save us. It is a plan to put Christ in charge of our present plans and our eternal destiny. Believing is both trusting his words and reliable, that they are reliable and relying on him for the power to change. Well, I not only believe that Nicodemus found what he came looking for under the cloak of darkness, but I believe that he left glowing and filled with the light of God. The evidence to this lies within John 19, where he accompanies Joseph of, Arimath Joseph of Arimathea, another Pharisee and secret disciple who came out of hiding to bury Jesus. They risked their reputations to provide for Jesus's burial. My final questions for you today are this. Are you a secret believer? Do you hide your faith from your friends and your coworkers? If so, today's your day to come out of hiding and believe, proclaim, and act. Today is the appropriate time to step out of hiding and let others know who you are and who you follow. For this is Jesus's plan for you, for me, and for the whole world. Amen. We invite everyone into a time of prayer, to mourn and lament in discerning what God might be doing in our neighborhoods and out into our world. Oh God, you made us in your own image, redeemed us through Christ Jesus and knit us together by the spirit of power and love. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred that infect our hearts Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love, and through our struggle and confusion, work to accomplish your purposes on earth. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Oh Jesus, you bear the pain of all who suffer. On this, the first anniversary of George Floyd's death, we pray for all who mourn and for all who carry the deep pain of racial injustice and violence. Comfort the grieving and the anguishing heart, O oh God. Assure us that we do not walk alone through the valley of the shadow of death, but that your light is shining and your presence is so real. God, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. O oh God, help us to see with new eyes the injustices within church and society. Call us to have a loving heart that respects and uplifts the humanity and dignity of every person. Open our ears to listen to and learn from the experiences of people of color. Open our mouths to speak up and about injustices. Join us with others to work for racial equity for all people. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all, help us to place our hands in your hands and in the hands of one another, that we may walk together and work together until this nightmare, hmm, oh God, ends. Hmm. And your call for us and all your creation is realized on earth as it is in this event. We pray in the beloved name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Padre nuestro, Madre nuestra, que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros y a nosotras tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas así como perdonamos a quienes nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, tuyo el poder y tuya la gloria por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. And now we invite you to make contributions to your local congregation as their own ministry continues. And as we sing right now, let the church say amen.
now receive the blessing. May the Lord, oh, continue to share you grace and peace and favor and love and kindness and tenderness. May our God continue to be with you during this turbulent, trying time. May God continue to shine God's face upon you and show you mercy. These things we pray in the beloved name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Also with you. Oh, my God is awesome. My God.